This production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes, your Company of Heroes community show and video replay review. That's what this is, video replay review tonight. And uh, we have episode number 45 available for you too tonight. It is on Angaville, and uh, to introduce the show for tonight, let us pass it right on over to Vittensby. Welcome to the program. It's always great to be here, and we got an interesting match. Um was a game that was reviewed over on Game Replays. And uh, next week, as a sneak preview, we're going to have uh, Diglo Ninja and Dave versus each other on a 2v2 map in a 1v1. So uh, this one we have uh, ARX Christian uh, against Wienertron. And uh, I'm in that one, uh, this particular uh, matchup. But... Um, ARX is uh, one of the clans that uh, is the clan that Kodachrome is in, and I don't know who Wienertron is, but uh, Bridger, can you go ahead and just say Wienertron for me right now, so we'll get it get it out of our system. Yeah, you're but not going to let me get away with saying it without saying this, huh? <laughs> not, need... not in this episode, baby. It, it might be Weins... Weiner... Weinertron? Wein, Weiner, He's like Weinstein? Wino. No? All right, whatever. <laughs> but uh, just some interesting <laughs> news before we get it on pause that uh, Anaketos is doing a uh, mod that's uh, really very, very good. I've been playing it. He hasn't released it yet, but let's just say the Germans have paratroopers, which people will find interesting, as well as a gazillion other new things in it. And the Allies have let's just say a squad that has over 40 men in it. So there should be some yeah. very interesting uh, stuff going on. Are you sure on that's the, not the, the Russians movie. that have a 40-man squad? They just throw at people? All right. All right. Let's get into this uh, game well, right here, though. Uh, I believe he's calling it the American Division. So Oh, the anyway. American Division. It's just a giant division. Okay. I yep. get you. That makes sense now. Okay. Let's jump into the game. We're at the five-second mark for those of you following along at home. And, well, actually, all of you would be following along at home unless... You have it somehow not at your house. Moving on. Five second mark. Unpausing the game in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. I'm following uh, the German player right now, the uh, Arx, uh, Arx Christian. And uh, good luck being exchanged by both players here. And uh, taking a quick look at the map. Angaville, of course, classic Company of Heroes map. Victory points on the right, one on the left. High fuel points in the middle going to cause major contention as well as the strategic points that allow you to cut off your opponent from most of the map. Um, the reason they are allowed to cut you off your opponent from most of the map is because you can capture them very quickly and decapture them very quickly, which allows you to do that more effectively than trying to, you know, cut somebody off by taking their plus 16 fuel. And two minutes later, you're like, come on, come on. Whatever. Not quite two minutes, but let's see. We've got a two pioneer start and a two engineer start for both players. Fairly yep. typical strategies. And a barracks opening. Is he going rifles first or jeep first? No, he's going rifles first. So this is a classic, classic Angaville right here. Um, interesting that he's going for that the Axis player. He's going for a, a quick high fuel and high munitions cap. Uh, really focusing on, on the uh, left side. Probably bring up the bulks to cap the strap point and uh, get all of his stuff going together. Um, yeah. That's pretty, pretty interesting just because i don't know i've kind of felt recently that just getting the plus five and the plus ten close to your base is kind of a safer investment but uh, i guess he wants to just secure one side so we'll see how that plays out for him yeah angaville is one of those maps that you sort of have a couple of competing opening moves it's like do you want to send you know your first two constructor squads at opposite ends of the map to try and secure the fuels and whichever one you don't find your opponent at you'll definitely have and maybe if you fight on the other one you might have a chance of getting it we actually have a bike coming out next and uh, that strategy sort of opposed to the I'm throwing everything on the left to make sure that I get the left sort of a sort of a situation so you see those kind of openings in Angaville a lot because of you know that big hedge and road running down the middle that really divides the map 
and uh, it really changes the way people play it as, it as opposed to if there was more ways to get across the map. And right now we have uh, a small battle between Pioneers and Engineers here. Uh, looks like the Engineers are about to win, which is to be expected. Pioneers yep. usually have a hard time uh, with the increased output of damage and the increased health that the Engineers have. Yeah, you never, you never really think about it, but shouldn't it kind of be the other way around? Like, you know, pioneers should be able to own engineers, and because riflemen cap faster. But no, that make no, because that would make it far too normal. Far too, far too sense. balanced. You yeah, mean? balanced. Yeah, that's what I was going there for. There you go. All right, but uh, yeah, it looks like the allies have done a pretty good job. Wienertron secured the right side pretty much for himself, as well as the territory just you know close to his base. So. Pretty sure he's getting slightly larger income, at least of fuel, at this point. And uh, looks like, uh, what do we have? Are they capping the, the point on the victory point? Yeah, they are capping the victory point on the left side. Or no? Am I missing oh, something? Oh, nice. Uh, just, I was just watching this battle over here on the left, and it was actually very good kiting by the Axis player in the process. If we noticed earlier, he was behind the... He the um, the hay, hay bales there, and he was doing a very good job just getting uh, uh, using heavy cover from that, and uh, as soon as the allied player charged him, it was definitely a good move for him to move back and away, and then he kited the enemy rifle squad right into the machine gun and forced it to retreat. So now uh, we have a, a pioneer squad coming to try and help finish this off along with the jeep. But let's see, we do not have any victory points capped yet. That's a pretty... Pretty interesting opening from the from the axe player, just capping order as well as um, you know going Volk's bike. Um, I don't know. I don't really see that too much anymore. I guess he just wants to take his his little territory and then stick to it. Because uh, certainly with that kind of opening, you'd basically just have a Volk squad to harass with. So maybe your pioneers, uh, which isn't going to amount to really anything against uh, won't amount to anything against what now we have four rifle squads on the field so yeah it's pretty pretty dangerous yeah if you can use that machine gun well it's gonna be okay but the bike I don't know how much the bike has helped him so far he's actually done a pretty good job of you know continuing to repair it whenever it takes damage so it's you know it's just sitting there doing damage and it's not costing him any manpower like the Volk squads are when he has to bring him back and reinforce it so that's the advantage of a bike early in the game is you can harass with it and if you micro it well you can get it out and repair it and go back and harass with it and get it out and repair it and go back and you know if you're just fighting a lot of engineers on the side that the enemy's not you know rifle spamming on if he's just got his engineers over capping somewhere the bike can do a lot of you know damage just you know killing those engineers getting them down to one squad forcing them to run all the way back and having to retreat and reinforce uh, pioneers trying to wire off the middle here but it looks like stopped by the riflemen um, we have, is that a, oh, an engineer squad on the left trying to cap that, but yeah, it does look like a fairly even split right now. The only major difference is that the, a, the allied player has capped his plus 10 munitions and his plus 5 fuel, and he's actually going after the enemy's plus 5 and plus 10 there. Yep, and we have a medic, well, probably what will be a medic bunker going up, um, uh, next to the strap point, so definitely his strategy was just take and hold and uh, not really harass. I'm not sure you know win this one considering left side Angerville um, only has one VP, but I'm sure we'll see a, a push out uh, happening. And he's done, he's done a good job to keep his squads alive early on. Uh, that bulk squad on the left probably going to be in trouble. Um, yeah, rifles are yeah. In, in light cover now. Yeah, and two the second squad came up. Yeah, he's had forced to retreat. That's, That's good, the though. BARs. Yeah, I just saw that bars now on the field. He's got two suppressed. That's very good. That's gonna for take him a long time to retreat out of that, and he's gonna try and get a bunch of damage as they're retreating. That's yeah, played, uh, that wasn't too bad. A, played a game that's up for replay of the week right now. I don't know by the time we're done, it might win or lose, but. Uh, was against Reddish Crane. Last time we played, it was replay of the week, and uh, he's really good at picking off squads as they retreat, and that's a perfect, perfect strategy to do. Um, if someone retreats, you got you know a couple of squads nearby. Make sure to follow them for a little while. I know a lot, but uh, follow them and follow them and follow them as, as far as you can. Try to block the path with your squads. 
keep on shooting. They, they're not going to really fire back, and uh, you can pick off squads that way. So even if someone thinks, hey, I got a free retreat, well, not necessarily. And uh, this is a really good good move by uh, Christian. He uh, ended up switching sides on Angaville and really doesn't have much to worry about considering unless he's going to upgrade grenades, which I don't think he's going to do at this point, uh, we're not going to have much to worry about uh, with that MG's pretty secure where it's at. I mean, it's well protected, so uh, we'll see if this motor pool can can end up breaking the, the hold that uh, Christian's going to have. On How much Wiener fuel Charles. does he have right now? He's only got 10 fuel income, and that's, that's why I was saying... How much so total fuel? Uh, only 11 fuel. Uh, that's why it's really crucial to have those points next to your base, because it's a lot harder to lose them for a long time. Uh, whereas, you know, it's a lot easier to get your strap point cut off. Um, at least, so, but, uh... Well, in this case, he's got two rifle squads just sort of sitting way the heck up here, which have so far not been able to help him at all because he's, brought, he's lost that strap point way down there. Uh, but that was a very good move, bringing the machine gun in there when there wasn't much to defend that area. His guys were off capping that northern area, and he's cut him off completely. So at this point, you know, the longer this goes on, the more resources that Axis player is just getting, you know, completely over his opponent. He's got the two plus 16s, and he's got uh, the two plus 16 munitions, rather, and the plus 16 fuel versus his opponent's single plus 10 and a single plus 5. So that's a pretty have... big difference. I would expect to see a quad pop out. I mean, at this point, he's got the motor pool. He's got 205 munitions. Um, almost got enough for 25. Almost has the 25 fuel for the quad. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he makes. But I, I'm betting on the, the quad at this point. Yep, and he's managed to grab that victory point over there on the right. This is a very weird you know, strategy by the axis. I mean, it's working, but it's very weird in that, you know, you take the whole left side, then you cross over to the right and ignore the northern part of the right, which, you know, sort of psychologically seems like it would be better for the for the, for the top player to take that victory point closest to his base. But in this case, it's worked out very well because of that building that has given him the ability to hold that area over there. Yep, and there's the uh, half track. It's not starting to upgrade. And the bar yet. suppression fire. Moving in the north. He's trying to crawl him out of there rather than hit the retreat button because he wants to keep him available instead of just allow you know to harass in order to as opposed to just letting them have a free cap. Yeah, we have level one veterancy on the storms. Uh, that's going to come in handy if he can if he wants. To, I don't know if he's going blitz KKC um, with the medic bunker. It's an interesting strategy either way encountering that quad once it once it upgrades um, at this point uh, I'm sure he probably has the munitions for the Shrek yep he's got 143 so he's gonna have a good uh, two Shreks at least yep. one by the time the the thing gets here as long as he starts here, here upgrading. comes the quad on the on the right pretty ineffective against buildings but uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna exactly be the best way to reveal your quad is to charge into a building with it yeah, it's probably not, especially because he's going to be able to get that machine gun out of there as long as he's paying attention. I'm just surprised that so much suppression fire has been used so so early on. Um, on the left, on the left, we have a uh, retreating storm. I'm not sure what he's saying. OMFG to. Um, uh, you want to take a I, guess? I don't know. I was just looking, and it looked like it would have been a great time to throw a bundle grenade, but he didn't for some reason. I'm not sure. If uh, maybe he tried, but he hit the retreat button too early and the bundle grenade didn't get thrown. I, I just sort of missed it, bef that battle before that happened. Is he happened. in tier 3? Uh, oh, you're right. I forgot they need tier 3 for the storm. I'm not sure if he's in tier 3. I did not see yeah. it. And we have another suppression fire going on the left. I don't know. Wow, agree. yeah. I think he's. Uh, maybe that's what he's. That's what the that. OMFG is about because he keeps getting suppressed. Yep. Why he doesn't just take out the MG from the uh, from the bunker is beyond yeah, me. Yeah, that's definitely a wasted unit. That's that's something you always gotta keep your units moving and keep them in a position where they can help you. If you leave them there, like yeah, he can't attack that point, but that unit is just wasted manpower, just sort of sitting there. Yep, yeah. especially with the amount of squads and how long they were just standing there for, it wouldn't have been too bad of an idea to take it out. But uh, now we have a 
the quad looks like it's going to type the Vermont quarters. That's so annoying. <laughs> You're almost four. Oh wow! Or Vermont quarters there, but uh, now he's yeah, throwing all his guys inside of the building. I really think it's better just to throw them in the bunker. I see that people not do that a lot, especially when you're playing, when you run into someone's base with a Puma. You should stick it in your MG emplacements. A lot of people forget that you can actually, uh, that you can actually put guys in there, in your base. And uh, if yeah. someone runs in your base with a Puma, um, you know, throw your guys in the emplacements. You don't have to run back to your HQ. In fact, I don't know, for some reason, I just feel that the uh, HQ doesn't provide as much cover as the, as the MG emplacements. Maybe it's just me. Oh no, Shrek Stormtroopers, he doesn't. He has him on hold fire. And the uh, the half-track ran right by him. Now he's got him running in the open. Here it comes, two in the ass, right now. Oh, only one hit. He's, that means he's probably going to get out of there if he... if he Yeah, he's going to get out of there. That was unlucky. If he'd gotten both of those off, he might have been able to kill it or at least get a damaged engine out of it. Oh wow, he's going to try and cut it off. He's trying. Two BRRs and he gets one. Dropped. Oh wow! Two BRRs drop. That's not bad for those Volks. Yeah, that's definitely gonna give that little extra edge. As long as he ticks it up, there we go. He got one. We got an M8 the charging spot. the base, despite the fact that he's got uh, you know Shrek Granite, uh, Shrek uh, Storms there. Yeah, that's really risky. But the uh, medic bunker so far has paid off. Um, he's got a Grenadier squad so far. Field. Yeah, he got a Grenadier squad from the from the. Bunker, so it's, he's got he's got his the manpower back. I don't know about the uh, if the one squad can be considered to make up for the munitions income. And he just dropped a mine in front. Storms retreating. Oh, yeah. Probably gonna hit. Nope, didn't hit it. It wasn't quite in the right place. Yeah. If they ever retreat from the right hand side, that'll work. But looks like. Wow. Oh, oh. no! It was good after all. Wow! I think that killed oh, the bike man. too. And finally finished off the storm with a, with the shot from the other. Was that the um, other M8 that came in and finished the storm there? Wow! How do you recover from something like that? Yeah, wow. 50 you munitions just lost and all boom. Of AT. Yeah, it was 150 minutes. Oh wow! Both Shreks are gone. I didn't even notice that. Yep. Neither of them dropped. That's bad luck. He's only got 50 munitions right now. I don't know if he's upgrading somewhere. Another one kills the other. What squad was that? Was that a medic? Maybe. That ran over uh, there? I don't know. Can medics set off mines? Out. I don't know. It feels like, sounds like Holy something I should God. know. He definitely, uh, he built an observation post on the fuel on the right, so... I don't know, right now might not be a bad time to check to, to, to a tank depot, because, uh... I don't know, I, I definitely think he's winning at this point. Even if I didn't have, you know, Fog of War reveal, I would know that he just pretty much owned his entire army, so... Uh, get a tank depot up and just finish them off. How many with, uh, munitions does this guy have now? The uh, the allied player. Maybe because he's been using suppression fire quite a lot. So Berger, I'm much. waiting for you to say Wienertron. I won't say it. Why won't you say it? Because it's beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> Very I don't good. know. But, I mean, this, that was really crazy with those mines. But... What I gotta know is, now I think he's upgrading, yeah, he's upgrading Shreks on this one squad. But, does he have enough to get a uh, machine gun on top of those M8s? Because that could really just win him the game right now, before those Shreks come out. If he had been Dropped able to... another, oh, another mine. mine. yep. Oh, no! It's uh, revealed, but uh, it will go back to uh, unreveal. I wonder if you can shoot the mine. Well, I guess I you could probably attack can. around with Panzer Shreks. Probably. I don't know. He's trying, it looks like. See? He's trying, yeah. He's hanging on to that, but we do have a high munitions income back to normal, so he's able to get another Shrek sometime soon, hopefully. They're definitely doing a good job to repair the, um, the uh, M8 M8s. on the right. Yeah, he hasn't lost a single one. He did kill the mine with the Shrek, so there we go. Yeah, not so, so, not so such a good job to repair what's actually worth repairing at this point, which is the quad. I'm not saying the M8s aren't, I mean, just priority-wise. I mean, the quad is definitely the priority here, and that uh, needs to be repaired. It's down to about 40% health yeah. and just retreated. And I don't know, I didn't see it, but I'm sure a couple guys got killed by the mine. No, the mine, no, he was able to kill it with Shrek earlier, I saw. 
Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, I see. So nobody got killed, luckily. He, he noticed it. That was a good move. Uh, he's at two CPs. He needs one more to get his star. And that could really get him back in the game, because then, you know, we don't have any tank counters on the allied side that I can find. Did the allies pick a, a, a doctrine yet? Yeah, we have uh, Armor Company Armor chosen, Company. and he's using his fuel. I've been experimenting with supply air at upgrades, and unless you're going, say, like Infantry Company in a hardcore, pure rifle Rangers fan strat, I really don't feel it's it's worth uh, spending spending it spending the up. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Spending the manpower and the fuel on it in this situation, getting it, you know, having a Sherman roll out right about now would be. Uh, would be pretty nice. Yeah. That's really what he needs to finish this off. That or, you know, like I said, get machine guns on top of those M8s and pull the half-track in and just annihilate the enemy infantry. Yep. I mean, he could have done that earlier. The, the longer he waits, the more Shreks he's going to be facing. So, you know, later it's not going to work out. Yeah, he's got to gotta take care of that medic bunker and uh, certainly maybe even switching over to weapon support center wouldn't have been such a bad idea instead of getting the supply out upgrade. In fact, all it really did was just give him, you know, plus 10 manpower income, uh, manpower rate at this point. And lost a whole bunch of stuff just now, so uh, it really the, it's not going to cut the upkeep down by much, because you're not really, he doesn't really have enough rifles on the field. Oh, how many squads do you have? One, two, Three. He's only really got four squads of rifles, and that's where your major upkeep will come from, so probably not Whoa, what was that? Was that an Axis mine? Off. Yeah, he laid, laid a mine there. I didn't notice that. I was, look, I was staring at the screen, and then I just saw an explosion. Another M8 base rush. Chasing the, uh, the machine gun back there. He's probably going to lay more mines. How much munitions does he have on, on the Allied side? Tons. He's got about 150 almost right now, 140. Yeah, he, yeah there's one mine. He, he's going to lose that M8, much more, I guess. Yeah, unless they get really unlucky here. There, there it is. Oh, no. 5% destroyed engine. He's probably still going to lose it because of the destroyed engine. We got three uh, CPs right now. He could go for a star. There it is. He didn't even shoot a Shrek at it, did he? I didn't uh, see a Shrek no, finish didn't. it off. I think that was a freaking... <laughs> <laughs> the guy shot him with a pistol, you know, uh, Tom Hanks style, and managed to blow the M8 up. <laughs> we do have a, we do have a tank depot up, and uh, good choice. But I'd say, you know, Ixne on the supply yard upgrades, say whatever it is, and uh, got to get that a lot earlier. Um, definitely could have just completely destroyed the army. I don't, I don't think if it was well repaired combined with the quad, two M8s and a bunch of BAR riflemen could, could uh, Christian had uh, fought that off. Yeah, but the we'll right see. side is completely fallen I think because he's concentrating on a base rush over there, so I don't know if it was worth giving up that whole right side, including the two victory points here, because right now um, the axes are right on the ropes. It's 130 to four, you know 494 you know, so if the Allies had just managed to hang on to victory points uh, for, you know, another victory point for another couple of minutes here, they'd be in good shape, but they need to try and make a comeback yeah. onto this that right side. Wow, I'm just really surprised. See, and then the other thing is, I've noticed, especially when you go left side of armor, it seems like you get the Pershing so fast, but by the time you could even, if you do a tier, a tier structure like barracks, you know, supply yard, motor pool, and then want to go to tank depot you already kind of have your Pershing so you know I was considering just pure rifle sp spamming if you can maybe getting AT guns or something I'm completely missing the battle on the left side so I'll just mention that later that M8 in trouble it's gonna get out of there though what else that was a Shrek hit it and a uh, and a stuh hit it at the same time now he's gonna charge the AT gun but again these M8s have, have been made. yeah these M8s have oh. been a little bit ineffective. They got there's a uh, level one veterancy, but they've been a little bit less than effective than if he'd put the machine gunner on top. I love getting the M the machine gunner on those M8s. Yep, I agree. Uh oh, uh oh, Shrek's ready to take out the uh, the half track here potentially. He's got him yeah, hidden. Line. He's lining and, up a rear shot. And that is why you need to repair your half track. No, nope, no, he's going to bundle nade the AT. Yet. I think. Instead. Yeah, then probably rolling with the stuff. Although with the half track nearby. Oh, it went a little far. Is it gonna work? 
No, it didn't kill them all. Just got a lot of the engineers. Ah, uh, that was bad placement, unfortunately. Oh, there's a croc on the field. I didn't even notice that. Roasting the hell out of those Volks. It might even kill it. Nope, managed to get out of there. Yeah, one of the things I was experimenting with was really hardcore rifle spam, left side of armor, uh, not necessarily early motor pool, and maybe only get motor pool for maybe a quad and uh, an AT gun or two, supply art upgrades, and then skip tank depot and just go straight to Pershing. I don't know. Uh, that's, well, that's now we have I've been fooling around with supply art upgrades recently. A stu calliope belt. I don't know what he was doing with that calliope trying to charge towards the enemy's base. When he doesn't have anything to defend it against uh You mean the stuff. crocodile? The croc, I'm sorry, yes, crocodile. Yeah, that's gone. No way it gets yeah, out of there. I really don't like seeing a, a croc come in this kind of late in the game, but uh, especially when studs are coming out on the field backed up by Shrek. I mean, it's, it's okay, but really a Sherman. <laughs> he, activated, he activated the field repairs right before he died. It's still got the spinning logo on it. He was trying to save it. Not quite. Not quite. What else do we have coming out? Another croc. Interesting. The Axis player is just sitting pretty, waiting. Uh, he's got 70 munitions. He doesn't have a lot of munitions income, but he could probably hey, use some mines ahead. right now just to lay down on the right-hand side here because you know he's going to have something attacking it soon. Actually, right now, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I definitely saw a pretty pretty strong early game from Wienertron. Um, pretty decent to really good mid-game. But this this decision to make two crocs, yeah, I don't really know about that. I I, I think that the two two Shermans would have been better used. Wow. Because now you're gonna have a problem countering the studs with your own infantry, um, and one AT gun really just isn't gonna cut it. I I wouldn't be surprised if we if we see them follow that uh, that croc straight back into the base if that's where he's going, and just uh, see some base ownage going on. But uh, yeah, but the croc I actually did a lot of damage to those storms. So, oh, he's trapped. Nice, nice micro with the studs to keep him from, from getting out of there. He's going to be able to rear shot him a little bit with these, uh, with these studs. And we do have Blitz, so we'll probably see a Tiger. And uh, another reason to get Shermans, especially against Blitz, rolls out. What are you going to do with the Croc? You know, and uh, he's had that Pershing. He's two CPs at least past the Pershing. Really? Um... He has it. So, as, he he has the ability to get it. And he hasn't chosen it yet. You mean? Right, and that's another reason. Um, I'm just surprised to see the two Crocs come out um, when he he had the Pershing, basically the time that he started building the first Croc and almost enough manpower for it as well. Um, well it's interesting as well, well. He's kind of not. He's stopped his harassment. It seems like he's not able to micro the Croc as well as a couple other things at once. So. Yeah, he's got a lot of guys know. sitting over here on the left. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here it comes. The stud train is coming to bring the pain. That's right. Oh, he hit his own <laughs> tank. <laughs> exactly. Too busy That's rhyming and not, <laughs> and not actually watching where he's going. They're just masochists. Leave him alone. Oh, okay. You're like... Hey, Charlie, this is for that poker game last night. I know you cheated. Boom. <laughs> All right. Wow, this is ridiculous, man. I don't know. We've said it before, but this is just... There it is. Obliteration. I mean, I, I know that he didn't have anything in there to defend it. But even if he did, I feel like he wouldn't have been able to stop that. You know what I mean? Even if he had two Shermans and a Pershing coming back there and he had his guys come back with sticky bombs he still wouldn't have been able to stop the destruction of that tank depot no. even if he had him running all back to his base right from the very beginning as soon as he saw the studs I mean they just kill things so fast oh no finish that supply yard then he can't get another tank depot the enemy he won't get another tank depot anyways his, pro his problem is right now he's a pop cap um, ah he but he did manage to take back both victory points somehow Yeah, he's gonna lose the HQ. What? I don't think he can recover. He needs to, set, to to run some stuff into the enemy and get some pop cap back. Here comes then. the Pershing. Aha! That's about it. 
and we've got uh, enough CPUs for a tiger here. Did he just get enough CPUs? Yeah. Uh, well, he's had it for a little bit. He, I think uh, destroying the HQ and the supply depot gave him enough to get the tiger, or at least the first. He's got the dangerous waters. <laughs> yeah, he's got the tiger now, but he doesn't have enough manpower yet. He's at 700. Pershing is his only hope, and he's keep, you know completely unsupported. I don't know why. I just think he's totally broken down, and yeah. after the, he had a really great opening, pretty good, really strong, you know, mid game, especially with the M8 mines, but didn't didn't make the right uh, choices. I think in the end, um, certainly camping all of his units on the low. So, I, I don't know. So, is he still at PopCap? Oh man, two Shreks just popped out of nowhere. <laughs> Good. That Pershing's got to get out of there. He could really use, you know, those riflemen to come over here and get some suppression fire going on if he has the resources to do it. Which he does. Yeah, he does. Level 2 vet. Uh, oh, does he have it? He has one rifle squad now. And here comes the Tiger, which, uh, without the other. any... I don't really know if... Uh, if he gets level one bet on that, that Pershing's gonna have a hell of a hard time taking it out with all the AP Oh! A bundle grenade destroys the entire rifle squad. That's bad. Ouch. Tiger's gonna chase that half track on the left and just completely destroy it. I and mean, look at all that AP. Look at all, yeah, lots of Shreks right there. That Pershing's in big trouble. kind of using its ability to crush through hedgerows to his advantage, though. If he could repair it and get it next to that AT gun, he's got a chance against the Tiger. He really needs a couple rifle squads to go along with it, though. He could really use the suppression fire on those on those Shrek squads. Yeah, I want to say... <laughs> oh! He didn't retreat his guys to repair his HQ. He's like, I'll just get another Pershing, but it's at, like, you know... Plus a hundred instead. What is it at? What is his income at? Sixty-one. Oh wow, that's even worse. Yeah, I mean it's pretty obvious there was just a complete, complete breakdown for one reason or the other in the late game. I mean sometimes it happens. You're having a game and you're like, oh man, I'm doing great, I'm doing great, and then you just make all the wrong decisions for some reason or another. Well, he just sat there with everything on the left hand side. I mean, he was microing his croc pretty well for the most part, but. Sitting three squads of rifles in a quad with an AT gun on the left hand side and two engineers, I don't know I don't know why. Um here comes the Pershing, it's gonna pretty much get owned. Wow. Good use of suppression fire. Yeah. But now he's his only engineer squad's back here repairing the HQ, so he can't his Pershing's still in trouble. Crocs in the base doing what it does best, roasting stuff. That HQ's on fire. Oh, he got the he got the the Shrek. I don't know if that was Grenadiers or if that was Storms, but he killed him. There's Panzer nice. Shrek right at the HQ, and here comes the other two right into it. Oh wow, that's not a bad move when you when you try and make that uh, attack on the left or the defense on the left anyway. Yeah, he just lost another Shrek squad. <laughs> Well, it's got level 2 and now level 3 vets. Yeah, it's not going to uh, get out of there, no. The tiger just took it down in like 3 shots. So yeah. I don't know. There and it is. There yeah, it was close. He, if he, if that shot had missed for some reason or another, he would have been home free because he's pretty fast with that croc. He says, oh no! At symbol. And another still, mine you know, laid he's down still there. sitting there on the left-hand side with the same stuff he's been sitting there for the last 10 minutes. Yeah, I don't. maybe I he doesn't notice. Hey, you know, you're... You're losing the game right now. You need to take some territory. Yeah. And all that stuff on the left could just come over here and just secure this victory point and force him to attack. Grenadiers making barbed wire. Um, I think you got to have uh, got to have it a little bit further away from the VP. Um, they can kind of cap over the wires sometimes. Yeah. If you don't angle it right. All right. Yep, basically, here, here comes the second tiger. HQ is just about to go up, and uh, 
Yeah. But yeah, I think I think this this game underscores what we were talking about with the power of those studs. You know, if they catch you unawares and they rush your base, they can destroy your your tank depot in you know a matter of 15 seconds with the both of them there. And it's not pretty common that it be two studs. That's I mean, true. I know. It I know what you're saying, I'm not going to defend it because I do kind of agree with you that it is a little bit too much, but uh, I don't know, maybe the stuff should just be what it is, which is really great against infantry and buildings, and that's it. I, I don't know, it, it does die pretty easily to AT guns, but I know it, it doesn't excuse the fact that it owns your base in, you know, a matter of seconds. So, I'm kind of borderline to it now at least more so than i was in the past but uh... yeah i mean it sort of makes up for you know it's really expensive and it's sort of weak weak against tanks and things like that but i still feel like one 150 percent just gives it too much power against buildings i'd still like to see it good against buildings make it 125 or 130 or something and i think it would still provide the building killing role it would just take a little bit longer than it does right now just a little bit yeah He's Fly making a comeback here. His own base. He, he'd take nice. these VPs and uh, he could make the game last longer. <laughs> That's basically it. Two Tigers owning your base, he's not going to be able to hold it off for too long. Well, what he could do is try to cap the VPs and then build an MG emplacement in some obscure place. But uh, he's got to build an engineer squad right now. I think, he, I think he can hold off. Let's see how this ends. I mean, we got an assault grenades going off in the by the northern building in Angerville, and he is decapping the VP, so, yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe he can do a little magic, uh, but it's going to take a little bit of magic. Yeah. If he, if, does he have anywhere near enough to call in another person? No, he used it on the Calliope, didn't he? Actually, he's not too far away, and at this stage, seems like, all, that's all that's left in the game. Because Axis Infantry, there's nothing. He has no capping power. Those riflemen are home free to defend that. Um, well, I'd be going in the base, probably going to barrage the HQ, is my guess. Yeah, it might. I don't think it's quite going to take it down if he did that. I don't know what he's trying to crush those uh, Shreks there. Damage engine, destroyed main gun. Is he still able to use... Yeah, he can still use the rockets, even though he's got a destroyed main gun, right? Yep. That's what I'd Flybe do, is I'd barrage the HQ gun. right now. He could. <laughs> and he's taking back the victory points down there. We that might see really Pershing pop out, and he's still got a chance if he can just hold on to that southern HQ or the southern VP. Oh no, there's pioneers there. I was really hoping to see uh, to see him come back, but uh, didn't play aggressive enough at the right times, and I think maybe getting one croc is forgivable. But two, uh, what was he, I don't know, that's the problem, you know. Okay, it might have worked well, but what about three minutes later when the tiger rolls out? So, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I just, I just don't like Crocs. I tend, to get, I tend to feel like I get caught with my pants down. Look when at I this cowboy it. driving through. <laughs> and he's getting away with it. He's like, all right, screw it. They're trying to take the VP. Get him. There's a tiger tank right there and we're in a freaking truck. I don't care. Let's go! <laughs> it's a wild, wild... Anyway, you drunk or something. I can take on the world! <laughs> Base rush with the quad! This tank's falling apart! We've got five hit points left! I don't care! To the enemy base! Go! <laughs> and there he is with another Calliope. Shooting it with a machine gun. Excellent. And here it comes. Let's see if it would have actually killed the HQ before. Elite tanks upgraded on the Axis side. No, not quite. He's he's like, oh crap, my HQ, and he suddenly built two Pioneer squads in Cinema. <laughs> <laughs> this one's just about over. He's right, it was close for a while. This is a very well-played game by both sides early, and as you said, uh, he fell apart in the mid-late, the late mid-game, basically. Uh, didn't wasn't doing enough with his rifles and basically gave up the right squad, the or the right hand side of the map 
um, just because he wanted to, you know, base rush with his M8s and micro there. And, I, and then, you know, uh, like many players, he got greedy. And instead of just holding on to those two on the right and keeping his forces on the right to defend, he decided to attack the left. And in attacking the left and attacking the enemy base, he left the right wide open. And we just saw the Axis player just send a couple of squads over there and retake everything with no resistance. Yep. I mean, I, I said it at least five times during the video replay review. I just couldn't believe that. <sighs> Sorry. I still think about it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They, I mean, he just sat like three or four rifle squads, two NG, the quad, an AT gun. If I missed anything, I'm sorry. But, you know, keeping your whole army to defend what little territory you have rather than taking more territory or at least trying to harass a little bit like he was doing perfectly, you know, good and perfectly fine in the early game. And that, you know, the M8 mine drops were some of the most, you know, spectacular explosions we've We've seen in a, in a while since, you know, what, the Microza replay, I think. Uh, yeah. You know what I think got to him? I think it was the the Stormtrooper fear, the terror of the Stormtroopers. Just, they could be anywhere, man. I don't know where they are. They could be there. They could be that tree right now, shooting Shreks right at my tanks, or right at my right at my motor pool units. I can't risk my motor pool units. I got to keep them safe over here with my riflemen. And if I send them out there, they might die. You know, so I think, you know, that's, it's, it's, you know, you laugh and it's kind of funny, but it's, it's sort of a, a psychology that you get into is if you're, if, if you, you know, watching these replays, you're like, oh yeah, of course. Why didn't you just take the right side? There was nothing over there. The storms were in the base or whatever, but you know, you don't know when you're playing, when you're playing as the allies and you're playing against Blitz, it's really intimidating to be like, well, shit, he could have his storms anywhere. I, t anywhere I go is like all of a sudden it could open up on me. So you, you, you have a tendency to not go anywhere. Uh, you know, so unfortunately that tendency is what won out in him this game as opposed to the intelligent, you know, okay, well, I just got to harass and I got to provoke. And if I lose my stuff, at least I'm trying because otherwise if I stay here, I'm going to do nothing, you know? I completely agree. <laughs> Uh, that fear of the stormtroopers is uh, it's psycho it's it's psychological warfare. Yeah. I mean, just knowing that they could be anywhere, a bundle grenade could pop up anywhere. Your tank for five seconds could get you know quadruple Panzer Shrek'd in the rear and just completely destroyed instantly. But uh, you know, at the same with the same logic being applied, you can't understand why he was just standing there. So I don't think it was necessarily that. I mean, I think there's a little bit of that in there, but uh, I just would have liked to see a little more harassment. And certainly, I, I I just blame it on his complete psychological breakdown or being tired or or whatnot. Yeah. Because uh, that end, it seemed like he gave it his all, was doing great, and then was only able to micro his croc for some reason and couldn't switch back and forth. So. Um, interesting game. I was happy to see a base rush. Would have liked to see a, a, a comeback, but we already saw a comeback from uh, Christian representing ARX. So uh, we'll see. We'll see those guys hopefully on the on the show again. Like I said, Kodachrome's in that clan. Uh, they have a clan forum over on Game Replays. Stop by, you know, say hi. So uh, yep, that's that. All right. Oh, and I just got replay of the week. So thank God, and it was a very close staff vote, as you can read down on the GR homepage. Uh, Excellent, congratulations! Yeah. All right, Thanks. so uh, it's my first one in like eight months. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> there about you that. go. Sometimes it cool. pays to play good games. All right, so. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Tales of Heroes episode number 45 here on the GameFire Network. Check out all our other stuff coming up there on GameFire.com. We'll have updates sometime in the near future. Hoping on uh, working tirelessly over the next couple of days to get some stuff up for you. At least the podcast for the audio stuff I'm going to hope to have ready for you soon. So stay tuned for that. GameFire.com is where you'll find us. Thanks for tuning in.